the orange. The fruit so popular, they named a colour after it. America glugs through two and a half billion litres of the sweet juice every year. And most of it comes from Florida, where they harvest and squeeze over 30 billion oranges a year to keep the juice flowing. Florida, the sunshine state, home of Disney World, Miami Vice, hanging chads, and oranges, millions upon millions of oranges. In fact, orange trees outnumber people three to one in Florida, and they produce over six million tons of citrus fruit every year. And almost all of it ends up as breakfast orange juice. To grow oranges, what you need is good soil, large quantities of blissful Florida sunshine, and buckets and buckets of rain. They don't like to advertise it, but the sunshine state is also the soggy state. Parts of Florida are among the wettest places in the US, with up to 180 centimetres of rain a year. Not so good if you came here for a beach holiday, but great for farmers like Tom Kirshner. This is what adds up to giving us a good environment to grow citrus, adequate rainfall to produce large crops with lots of juice in them. Thanks to the sizzling sunshine and dismal downpour, Tom's able to grow five different varieties of oranges here. They do this because each variety ripens at different times of year, which means you can enjoy OJ all year round. But how do they know when an orange grove is ripe for harvesting? To guarantee that the juice will be liquid sunshine, the sugar to water content is analyzed, yielding a measure known as the bricks. When it's at least 10% sugar, the oranges are ripe for the picking. But there's no substitute for the taste test. Can't beat that. Ready to make orange juice. The fruit might be tasty, but it's not going to make juice if it's left on a tree. They need to be picked, and with millions of oranges ripening at once, they need to be picked fast. If you want to get fruity in a hurry, you need one of these terrifying contraptions. Or, as they like to call it here, the Oxbow 3220. This magnificent machine is what's known in the trade as a continuous canopy shaker. And this particular machine was designed by Tom Visser. It engages the foliage of the tree and shakes it to and fro. And the shake is violent enough to sever the fruit stem and the, then the fruit falls and gets intercepted. The Oxbow can harvest an incredible two tons of oranges every minute. This performance comes at a price. A pair of these mechanical orange pickers will set you back a million dollars. Just as well Tom's got enough work to keep them busy, picking two million boxes of oranges, totaling 81,000 tons of fruit per year. Once the oranges have been picked, the race is on to make sure your breakfast OJ tastes as fresh as can be. So the fruit is shipped out in these 400 horsepower transport trucks, 20,000 kilos at a time. The trucks bring them to an OJ processing plant, like this one in Lake Wales. Dave Crumbly makes sure they don't run out of oranges. We'll do about 200 of these trucks a day. And uh, each, each one of these trucks will hold about 120,000 oranges. In 24 hours, we'll be about 24 million pieces of fruit that will run through here. So more often than not, Dave gets his daily dose of vitamin C. To begin with, the oranges are washed out of the trucks. The fruit is then carried along two kilometers of conveyors into the processing plant where it's graded. The oranges are separated by size, and it's time to extract the juice. But these days, you won't find gangs of sad-looking orange squeezers with sore wrists. This is orange juice squeezing on an industrial scale. This fearsome machine drops each orange into a ring of metal prongs, which squeeze out the juice before ejecting the pith and peel. From orange to OJ in the blink of an eye. Of course, when it comes to OJ, the world is divided into two great opposing camps. 
One likes it smooth, the other with bits. So a load of the pulp that has been carefully screened is added back into the juice to create the wholesome, authentic OJ with all the good stuff still in it. The OJ is now ready to be poured into cartons. It takes two dozen oranges to make enough juice to fill each 1.89 litre carton. But quantity counts for nothing unless the quality is good enough to keep orange juice the world's favourite breakfast tipple. There are palates that can tell a Beaujolais from a Burgundy in an instant. And noses that can whiff a Chanel number 19 from a hundred paces. Well, these guys do the same for OJ. An expert OJ taster can spot minute variations in taste, composition and acidity. Doesn't have a very much oily feeling either, does it? There are 11 different measures of quality. Only when a batch of OJ ticks every box is it fit to be shipped. All that effort means this factory alone turns 3 billion oranges into over 250 million litres of juice every year. Which makes delicious fresh OJ a luxury we can all enjoy. I love oranges. I love orange juice. Nothing any better. <laughs>